Hello everyone, this is Phyllis Wilson. This post is coming out late today, which is May 29th, 2020, or should I just say May of 2020. It's coming out late today because my day was extremely busy. Um, this weekend will be no less than busy, but I wanted to make sure that I posted something today just to let you know I'm still here, just um, doing a shift. Let's say that I'm doing a shift right now. Um, it's e dealing with emotions and the emotional shift I'm dealing with. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about is emotions, uh, basically. And I'm talking about them, the emotions of sadness, the emotions of transition or um, sadness slash blah. <laughs> if that's a good way to explain the emotion is bl just blah. Okay. Um. First sadness because um, I lost earlier this week one of my cousins to cancer, not to COVID, but to cancer. And he was instrumental in my life, more so when I was younger than when I became an adult, simply because he wasn't around as much, uh, lived in different states and so forth. But I have the pleasure and honor to officiate his funeral. Um, and in doing that, I got to see some of my father's family today, um, and actually talk to them more this week, this entire week, um, and checking up on them and seeing how they're doing and so forth. And that brought in a sense of sadness. So that's what the sadness component comes from. And at the same time, um, last weekend, last Saturday night, Saturday night, early Sunday morning, I had a serious, intense conversation with someone and it was someone who had been in my life for some time, but the conversation got so serious to the point that I literally could hear myself saying what I've said to you all in one of uh, two, maybe two of my earlier videos about um, letting go um, when seasons change and letting go because it's time to, and also the shedding coats. Because I was physically taking on the, physically and mentally taking on the responsibility of trying to uplift this individual because I could see where they are headed if they would just stop being so closed and sheltered in. But it was starting to create me being stagnant and what I needed to do within my life. So because I have the responsibility and the purpose that was gifted to me, because your purpose is definitely a gift. Um, it was gifted to me. I had to release that individual and all that they have going on and give it back to them. So then that became that whole blah feeling because I'm not sad about it. I'm not happy about it, but I'm also not overjoyed about it. But at the same time, I'm in a blah format with it because even though I said what I said, I stuck to my guns. I kept that boundary that I had just made with this individual he kept trying to overstep that boundary because I had allowed him to get comfortable with me handling and helping to be a crutch. That's what I was, a crutch for him. Um, and we have been friends and knowing each other since my son was five. But now my son is a grown man with three children of his own, um, about to turn 30. So it was at the point of, okay, I need you to realize it's not a multiple choice here for you at all. This is me saying, here's the cord that I am now cutting that I have allowed to not just gain in, com in uh, consistency and fluid in the cord, but I've also allowed the cord to expand. Well, it has expanded too much. So before the cord is totally burst or before you keep trying to add more into this cord and keep giving me more coats to wear for you, I am cutting the cord. Here's the boundary I'm drawing. Here's the limitation I'm setting. I wish you well. God bless your ministry. <laughs> and some people who know me well know that I'll say that. God bless your ministry. I wish you nothing but the best. But I have to let go and release the situation altogether. Um, you never feel happy and overjoyed when you have to do that because it's someone that has been a part of your life for so many years and for so long. However, it's necessary so that they can grow. So 
this since last Saturday ish, early Sunday up until today, it has been an emotional um, perspective for me. Um, emotional in the in the sense of being sad as well as being blah. And then Monday when my cousin's actual funeral is that I will be officiating. And it's not my first time I've officiated funerals for my family members. But it's the first time that I've officiated where there is going to be more emotion. Because all of my family can't be in the same location due to COVID and the regulations for that. So even though we have a huge family and everyone that can and will want to come has contacted, if not myself, one of his siblings and wanted to know the information because they want to be there. It's going to be more emotional because at the cemetery, you're only allowed 10 people because he was in the military. So he gets to go to the private federal cemetery here in our state. And that's where he'll be laid to rest. But no one will be allowed to actually go to the actual gravesite. They'll have to view it from their car. And then that's where it brought on more sadness for me because of me having to commit his body back to the earth before we even get to where the earth is going to be, where they're going to lower his casket in the ground. That's one thing. But then more sadness because our family can't even come close together because of the social distancing component. And they'll be able to watch and view from their car. But only 10, 10 people can go into the cemetery. Or they're not allowing anybody in. So, And there's no flowers. You can't bring flowers. So that, and he won't get the salute. So for me, that's another piece and component of sadness. But it's also sadness for me, emotionally, because it's a reflection of the times that we are now in not just as a family, not just as the state, not just in, as the U.S., but as the world. The times that we are faced with now are so saddening that, and if you haven't realized it by now, it's time for you to open your eyes, take those blinders off and see there will never be what we considered normal before. There will always, from now on, be a new norm. Even as the states and the cities are opening up different things, whether they're doing it in phases or they're just saying, this is the day that we're opening up, whatever the case may be, we won't have the time or of lifestyle that we had prior to COVID-19 ever again. And people will become more aware of their surroundings, who they touch, how close they walk to people, and so forth, simply because the this COVID-19 has taken so much, not just emotion, not just strength, not just um, relationships have gone through a test and a trial throughout COVID-19, but we've also lost family. We've lost hope for some people, and those emotions are stirred up even more. So my final thought on this topic of emotions for you is I appreciate you. And I hope with all of the emotion and strength that's in my body that you will allow your emotions to not guide you, but to strengthen you. Because our new normal, we don't even know what it's going to look like just yet but we'll soon find out. So keep being strong. Keep being a steadfast person because the world as we used to live is no longer going to happen. Until next time, think about your emotions and it's okay to express them.